<laughs> then they go in, right? And then it's like a single foul line, right? <laughs> They stand there like Lamb Lam was brutal. Now I'm, I'm crushed. Now we get on the bus and John Sally is the first one who taps you on the shoulder to say, hey man, it, it's gonna be all right. I'm taking it out on him. <laughs> what you mean, man? What you? <laughs> <laughs> but how I got over it, Max, I didn't go to practice the next day. I was so crushed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now this is the biggest moment of my career, everybody else. And I fail. I mean, flat, you know. My wife comes in, the phone rings. She said, you know, you know, you got a phone call. I go, no, no I, I, I think you should take this call. Hey, this is Bill Russell, young man. Wow. Wow, right? Wow. Everybody fall off the horse. I didn't go to, I didn't go to practice the next day. Wow. I was so crushed. Cause remember, I, I'm the, I'm the guy that's never made a mistake. Yeah. I'm the guy that's, you know, made the big shots, hit the free throw. You know, I'm I'm the most trusted guy on the team. I'm the dependable one, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grade school, high school, college. You can't find nowhere where Isaiah Thomas messed up the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now this is the biggest moment of my career, everybody else. And I fail. I mean, flat. Right. And and so I don't know how to handle this. I'm embar I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. Mm -hmm. Like really embarrassed and ashamed. So I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to practice and laying in the bed. And you know, my wife comes in, the phone rings. She said, you know, you know, you got a phone call. I go, no, no, no. no I, I I think you should take this call. And I'm like, Fine. so hey, this is Bill Russell. Young man. Wow. Wow, right? Wow. Everybody fall off the horse. You need to get up. Get back on the horse. It's going to be all right. Damn. It's the damn, right? I, I've never heard this story. The Celtic, right? Yes. Now, now, back in, back way back when, right, my family, we were always Celtics fans. Mm -hmm. And... Most most of the East Coast, right? You were Celtics fan because the Celtics always started the brothers, right? right? So right. I never forget 1974. I'm going to school, and I was one of the first kids to be bused out of my neighborhood to to a white school, right? Mm -hmm. And and my mom grabs me before I before I leave the house, and she goes, "You need to watch this," and I'm like, "I oh, missed the bus." She goes, "No, you need to watch this." And you know there was a, there was a white woman being interviewed on television, and she was saying, "I'll never let my kids go to school with these ends." Right? Wow. I was in Boston. Yeah. And, and my mom made me watch it, and then she said, "This is why we root for Bill Russell in the Celtics." Wow. And let me walk out of the door then, right? Damn. You know everything that Russ and the Celtics were going through and, you know, Red Arback in, you know, 67, 67, I believe mm -hmm. he makes Bill Russell the head coach. Yes. Yes. First black coach, first black coach. Yes. Matt, listen to this. Do you, do, people don't realize what was the young folks don't realize what, the, what was going on in this country. In 1966, 1967. Oh boy, boy, boy! Yeah, and and Red Arback says, "This dude here is gonna be my player coach." Boom, and he puts it in the world's face. That that that's big time, man! Come on, that's, oh, that's big time. Oh, oh that's wow. big time. Um, and people didn't know that the Celtics had the first black player. Chuck yes, Cooper was yes. the first black player to play in the NBA. Yeah, we, we used to run fast breaks in the neighborhood and we would say, that's a Boston. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was thinking you were talking about playing cards, bid whistles. Yeah, table. no, man. It's a, it's a Boston, man, because wow. the Celtics had all the brothers. So now I get that call from Russell. So I end up, right, getting out of bed and, you know, I, I go... Now, here's the best part of this story, Max. Game six, 
I walk out on the floor and, you know, as they getting ready to, you know, throw up the ball, right? DJ walks up to me, taps me. You all right? Oh, yeah, Dang. I'm all right. ML, right? You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Larry winks at me like, and and we win game six. Now we lose game seven, but that's how the Celtics internally treated us. That's wow. why I always feel like, you know, when whenever you hear me talk about our journey, I am always saying the Celtics, the Celtics, the Celtics, right? Because everything that, that y'all were and that y'all did, not only did y'all, not only did y'all beat us, but y'all were also great teachers. You know, wow. we had we learned some hard lessons, but at the same time, y'all were great teachers. So now, now, did you did you guys pass that lesson down as Detroit champions? Because everybody talked about you in Chicago. And yeah, the they didn't bull. take it well. <laughs> <laughs> No, you no, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't go there. I didn't didn't take it well. (laughs) They they didn't take the lesson well, or you didn't teach the lesson well. No, we taught it well. They didn't accept it as a gift. Right? Hey, Robert Paris beating Lambeer up, and we laugh about it, right? That made us tougher. You all the hits and all the knockdowns that that y'all gave us over the years, right? And the ribbon and everything else, that made us tougher. We, we, You have never heard a Piston say anything negative about a Celtic. The Cedric Maxwell Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Wow. Well, wait, whoa, whoa, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about the one comment that Dennis Rodman had about Larry Bird? Yeah. And he's just, he just another white guy. He, he wouldn't be that good. And he got a lot of flack for that. Yeah, he but got a lot. You came to his defense and explaining kind of what he meant, trying to soften it. And some people understood it. Some people didn't. Yeah. And, and, and so when not – we all know who Rodman is and was, yeah. right? And and Rodman still today, right? You put a mic in front of him. <laughs> you, know, they, they, you don't know, right? That that's just unfortunately that's that's how it was with him, right? So my job as captain is let me try to help and protect, but at the same time we were going through some issues media wise in terms of how NBA players were being talked about and perceived in the language that was being used around the NBA players. Yes. yes. So, so as opposed to diving into that, they just sidebarred and said, Oh, you know, this guy don't like this one. And, 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 and they used that, but they never got back to what, what we were, what the conversation was really about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, now, I'm gonna take you back to this. I remember Larry Bird on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and then in an the article he said, "These are his words: Don't ever put a white guy on me. <laughs> I feel disrespected when you put a white guy on me." <laughs> now, Matt, tell me if I'm wrong, man. You can pull up the quote. And this is no, what- you're. I mean, you're you're right a thousand percent. I've seen him say that when I was on the court. They put John Conkac on him one time, and he told told the Atlanta Hawks, "You disrespect me by putting this white guy on me. <laughs> I'm going to score more because he's on me." So, oh, I do understand what you're saying. So, so you know, a lot of that, you know, being talked about and everything else is just, you know, like Chris Rock said, is is selective. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where we're gonna go with it. But but 
So back to Chicago, right? It's like every lesson that we learn from the Celtics and every lesson that the Lakers, Celtic, Philadelphia, you know, Chicago, Chicago takes the point, you know, they act like they just showed up. They don't get nobody, they don't get y'all no credit. They don't get the Lakers no credit. They don't get Philadelphia no credit. They don't get the Pistons no credit. Every time the Chicago Bulls talk, it's just the Chicago Bulls. We we tell our story inclusive with the Celtics. Y'all tell y'all story inclusive with the Lakers in Philadelphia. You know, there's a there's a learning tree. Yes. Chicago is like, oh, you hit me and walked off the court, y'all bad dudes. Wow. Time out. Max, find me the film of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird shaking hands after a championship game yeah. or a playoff game. I want, I want y'all to find me that film, right? Now, how, how was the torch passed? The torch was passed. The teams always let the other team celebrate on the court. Yeah. And then what we do privately, we come to the other guy's locker room and say, hey, Nice but shot. but but Isaiah, you here's the thing I'll say. You did leave early though. You guys did leave early walking out in front of. Them. Okay, now hold on. Because I want to I, I want you to explain that. I'm just yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, being yeah. I'm being the average fan who's saying, please ask Isaiah what happened when they walked off yeah, the floor yeah, without yeah. without even before the game is over. Yeah, so if if memory serves me correct, <laughs> yeah. Game six, we beating the Boston Celtics. In 88, Adrian Dantley is on the foul line with maybe 52 seconds or something like that to go. Now, they show the film, and this is how the script writers say, oh, the Celtics pass the torch to the Pistons. They show the film of Mikhail shaking my hand. Yeah. Now, Kevin had walked past me. And I was like, hey, <laughs> you see Kevin turn around. Oh. And dap me up. And, and as he keeps walking. Now, Kevin and I have known each other since high school. Right? So now, now you missed the most important part. Adrian Dantley was on the free throw line. And y'all walked through the middle of the floor wow. and walked off. Wow. And left the other five guys out on the floor to finish the game. <laughs> so those are the facts. Okay. Okay. That we we never you never heard us say until recently, you know, well the Celtics walked off on us. When 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 y'all walked off the court, right? We said that they deserve. And we honor them in this moment. Wow. Right? Because as a champion, they yeah. were falling. Right? Mm -hmm. The champ, the champ has fallen, and we're going to give them the dignity and the respect, right? To be off this floor and not watch us have to celebrate and all this other stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how it always okay. was. Okay. Okay. And, I and after that. I remember, you know, Jimmy Rogers and Casey and everybody coming in our locker room saying, hey, nice job, everything else. And then you then you leave and you go about your business. Chicago, I mean, the Bulls, Jordan, every time you hit him, he was crying. Oh, my hit me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Going, I, I, going, I never... going to David Stern's office, going to the commissioner's office, having a, a meeting about getting hit, getting fouled, you got to change the rules. I'm like, wait a minute. I watch I watch Dr. J get beat up. I watch Magic get beat up. I watch Max get beat up. I watch Bird get beat up. I'm, I didn't got beat up. Everybody get beat up, but wait a minute. Now we got to change the rules because he getting hit. Wow. And you know what? I've, I've heard you. I've heard you say this here recently. And they talked to Jordan. They talked to you. 
And I uh, and I've never seen you as animated talking about another player. And Michael's disdain for you, and your disdain for my. But I love the story because you said Michael was so welcome in Chicago. I had my family, I had my sister, I had people watch out for him. All this stuff, and then it became this whole thing. He didn't want me on the team or 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 the dream team, and. And then I heard Michael say, well, you know, hey, he was one of the baddest motherfuckers that ever put laced up shoes. So it's like, you guys are these great warriors, but you're just really animated. He's animated about your relationship, which is a little crazy to me, about how great you two guys are. Well, I'm, I'm animated about it because he just ain't been telling the truth. <laughs> okay. So, so Max, it's like, on, on, on one hand, right? I'm thinking we cool. Yeah. Now, if you notice, he asked me to be in his documentary. He asked me to be in The Last Dance. His producers asked me to be in The Last Dance. Max, you see me sitting there in a three-piece. Yeah. In a tie. I dressed up. I'm thinking that I, don't, I didn't think we had a problem. I think, you know, all families and everybody, you know, get along. Yeah. You know, whatever happened with Dream Team, I'm taking him at his word. You know, he said he didn't have nothing to do with it. Okay. You know, stuff happens, right? Mm -hmm. I'm moving on with my life. I coached him the last All-Star game. He, Ahmad, Rashad, and I have been to dinner. You know, I'm, I'm thinking everything cool. Yeah. I really, I, I really, I'm totally blindsided. I sit down, and I do the interview at NBA TV. One of my one of my best friends, you know, well, you know, family, best friends, you know, work together and everything else. His name's Kevin Cottrell, right? I asked Kevin to sit in on the interview, right? So Kevin and I at NBA TV, his crew comes into NBA TV, you know, we 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 rolling out the red carpet. I sit there for two hours. I sit there for two hours. And now the last dance comes on during the, what do you call it? The, the lockdown, right? Mm -hmm. So me, my family, everybody, everybody locked down because you can't go outside. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm sitting there watching like everybody else. You know, I'm, I'm anxious to see because this is the first time that I ever get a chance to peek behind the Chicago Bulls curtain. Yes. I peek behind the Celtics curtain. Lakers curtain, y'all know what's behind us and everything. But you know, the Bulls, we never really got to see what was happening behind the scenes there. Right. So I'm, I'm curious, right? Who did we lose to? How did mm -hmm. they beat us, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and then it comes on, and forgive me when I say this, but I watch a whole documentary about a guy being an asshole. And he calls me an asshole. <laughs> now he calls me an asshole and then says, I hate him. This, this you know. Yeah. Hate's a big word. Hate's a big, big word. word. Ain't nobody ever said that. Yeah. About me. A former player, current player, ain't nobody ever said, I hate him. Right? Wow. He said, as much as I hate him, right? And he's an asshole. And, I, and I'm like, whoa, 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 time out. So now we all looking around. And now my phone starts ringing. His former teammates, his his inner circle, you know, well, Michael didn't mean that he it didn't come off the right way, so forth and so on. I'm like, OK. I never hear from Michael. Now I'm hearing from everybody around him. And now every interview that I do, including this one, I have to answer the Michael Jordan question. Yes. Right? And, and if you didn't mean it, then come out and clean it up. Wow. But, but if you meant it, you can leave it like it is, but stop sending your people to tell me that that ain't what you mean. Wow. So this is where I'm at. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm pretty manly about, you know, where I, where I've been. 
all of y'all, when y'all were, when y'all were players, y'all elected me to be the president of y'all union. And I've stood firm and tall and I never tried to backstab nobody. But the way this stuff has played out, it's like, hey man, you know, you, you either clean that up or leave it like it is. And if that's the way it is, that's fine. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you hear the same thing. You think about the last dance. Scotty, Scotty had the same problems. Scotty was, he was bum rush with, you know, you know, he wasn't this and he wasn't that and, and Michael this. And, and it was a lot of stuff about that, which was like, because I talked to Robert Parrish, who did play with him that last dance. And I said, so what, what do you think? He said, I played with Michael. He said, and he said, Michael was a bully. He said, he bullied a lot of those guys. He said, he said, one game I played, we played, I was on this team in practice. We won the first game. Then he put me over to the second team, Robert Parrish talking about that. And we beat Michael's team three times. So after, after practice, Michael, he, he looks at Michael and said, boy, how'd you like that ass kicking we gave you today? <laughs> and I was laughing. And he said, Michael looked at him and said, if you keep talking, I might kick your ass right now. And Chief, who never gets animated, going, oh, hell no. Hell no. I, I came here with rings already. You ain't going to bully me. And it was just funny to see Michael and things were said about him, said about you, his greatness. And to hear you talk about it, you appreciate the fact that he was a great player. You acknowledge all those things, absolutely, and and um, just it's just kind of a just. I, I hope as as a black man, as a as a former player, I hope someday that Michael comes to you and sits down, and you guys break bread, just like the, it's just like me watching the whole thing. What you imagine? That was just so heartwarming to all of us as players that these two guys who were former friends got back together, man, and just. You know, chopped it up. And I have the same thing right now with Larry because people, I made a comment. I said that uh, Larry Bird, to me, I said the greatest all around player ever to put on a Celtic uniform probably was Kevin Garnett because he was great on the offensive end and great on the defensive end. And somebody said that to Larry, and Larry said, well, he's Max is going to quit on him. Like, and, and I just took that as a fence. Like, damn, Larry, like, I, you know, I was hurt when I played you guys and I played as much as I could. And me and Larry finally talked a little bit about it, but there's still some lingering animosity someplace. And it's hard for me to get over because when you go to war with a guy and you win championships with a guy, that's the last person you think of that you're going to have any, you know, any animosity about at the end of the day. And I know you and Michael were adversaries, but you've also played on different all-star teams and been around each other so much that it just seems weird. It, Max, that's what I'm saying. One of us is not telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, well. and, and I'm just saying it ain't me. Okay. <laughs> here, here are my facts laid out right yeah. documented you know you and 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 again it's important that i'm having this conversation with you because there is a succession now there is a you know there is a you know y'all beat our ass not only did y'all beat our ass but then y'all beat our ass <laughs> <laughs> and y'all would talk talk crap to why y'all was beating us hey you remember us playing in joe lewis arena and and um I, I went up to to take a shot, and y'all was y'all was gonna beat us four two that series. It was the last shot of the, the series, right? And Mikhail hollers out, "AI, hey, I, I hope you make that shot because this your last shot of the season." <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You don't forget anything. <laughs> your mind is. I mean, you 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 have kids, right? You have kids. Yes, yes. They must be looking at like, don't say anything around that because he gonna bring that shit back around <laughs> some way. Yeah, but you know what it made me do? It made me get better. It was like you know, I didn't take it in a bad way. It was like, and I missed the shot too. 
I didn't know miss that. I missed it, right? <laughs> that stuck with me. But, but you know, Chicago, one of the things that really disappointed me about watching The Last Dance, I would say probably the biggest thing that disappointed me about watching Last Dance was seeing how Michael Jordan treated Jerry Krause wow. in that documentary. Mm-hmm. Now, now, you know and I know, right, in our era, these are the respected GMs. These were the dudes, right? Yeah. Red Arback, Jerry West, Wayne Embry, Jerry Krause, Jack McCloskey. Yes. And them them were like the guys, right? And I could never imagine Red Arback being treated. Think about what I'm saying. Red Arback mm-hmm. being treated the way that Jerry Krause got treated by the players. And I can't imagine Jerry West getting on the bus and the Lakers like dissing him. I can't imagine us like treating Jack McCloskey the way the Chicago Bulls was treating Jerry Krause. Now, it's one thing to do it privately, but now you are gonna do it in your documentary. The man is gone. You yeah. know, he got he got he got family still here. Can't, can't, de- can't defend himself. And I'm just saying why. You know, wh- why why go there? And and so when I when when you talk about the last dance and all that, I'm just saying, hey man, it's it's some facts that just aren't being presented. And I'm mad. Well, I won't say I'm mad. You use the word disdain. I don't hate him. I don't understand why he did this to me. I don't understand that, but at the same time, it's like, okay, if this is how it is, then this is how it is. But if if you want to apologize, like you, you know, I'm going back. You said Magic and I sat down. Yeah. And Magic said, "Hey, you know, I'm sorry for all the things I did to you." Carl Malone said, "I'm hey, I apologize for all the things. You know, I I can accept that, right? But if if you want to have a private sit down with me and then leave this stuff flowing out here publicly, no, 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 no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You did it on an international stage. I'm in Dubai and I got to answer, answer the questions about last dance. Everywhere I go now, yeah. I got to answer. Yeah. So if, so I have to speak to it now. I got to speak my truth. Yeah. So, if you want to stop it and clean it up, then you know publicly you got to say, "Hey, this this ain't what I meant. This wow. is how I came off." Now I do still have his producer's emails. <laughs> had the secret files. I got- I'm just saying, I, I got I got stuff where you asking me to participate in your story, and and I'm thinking we all good, but now I'm finding out. All these years that we wasn't, wow. Just saying that ain't that ain't cool, man. That ain't wow. nothing out that cool, man. I I I I so appreciate you coming on. But before I let you go, I always ask a question. I I really want to get your thoughts on this. We're building a Mount Rushmore in the back of your house, so you got four places in there, and it's uh for athletes. Could you? What would the four athletes be that would be on your Mount Rushmore? Because I know you so you you think about stuff all the time. This is good for me. On um, on my Mount Rushmore. Your Mount Rushmore. I would probably have to go um and the kids all is all sports are included. Everything's included. Okay. Uh Ali. Yeah. Russell. Serena Williams. Wow, you got mine too. And uh, that fourth one is always a killer. Yeah, I'm I'm torn because um, I I want to say Jackie, 
Jackie Robinson, but at the same time, um, I don't I don't know if if there's another one that I I want to stick in there besides Jackie, but I'm I'm gonna go Jackie Robinson. Those okay. Are four. Okay, that's about where I was at. I went with Ali. I had Tiger Woods because he brought mm. golf to the masses. Yeah. And I did have Serena because she's the greatest athlete ever. And yep. then I went with Mr. Bill Russell because of the multiple championships he won and the time that he won it in when uh, the segregation and people pooping in his bed and all yeah. it was just he what he lived, most of us just absolutely, you know, we're horrified to think about, but he lived and was a total champion. And now I hear a story of him, a Celtic. I got to get this in my mind. A Celtic calling a piston saying, it's it's all right. You got to get back on the horse. I, yeah, I, I'm blown away. And this is this well, is absolutely me, gold for me, man. Let me tell you what else is gonna blow you away. How about that piston being at that Celtic Kevin Garnett jersey retirement? <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> and, and that, 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 you know, because you said that, quickly tell us about that relationship because Kevin always said that he would we would go to Chicago when you know being a broadcaster on the bus with him. Yeah. And we go by some little area in Chicago. He said, That's where I used to play. And he said, the one time I was there and they told me to come down with my sneakers and Jordan and them were down there playing. And I went down there and I busted Scotty Pippen's ass. Yeah. And over in the corner, was <laughs> little dude, <laughs> Isaiah saying, yo, big fella, big fella, you can play in the league. <laughs> and and that to him was just, you, you, he looks at you, obviously bringing you to his his retirement of his jersey was, was big, but he looks at you, your relationship was just incredible. And I also took him into the Hall of Fame. Wow. A piston. Yes. Taking the Celtic into the Hall of Fame. Wow. Unbelievable. So, so our, our relationship, you know, it, it it was organic, but it was, it was, how can I say it? Um, wisdom and mentoring and knowledge, right? Wow. And mm. and you got another one there in Jalen Brown. I, I'll tell you, that. ask Danny Ainge to tell you how Jalen Brown got Got to Boston. <laughs> Why? See, that is not a problem. But you got to tell me quickly now, because you got you got to speak right now. How did he get there? Well, I I I, I called up I called up Danny and I said, Hey, you know, remember Jalen Brown was supposed to go like 14, 15 in the yeah. draft. Remember they were saying he couldn't shoot, he couldn't do all this. And I and I called up Danny and I said, Hey, you know what? This guy's a Celtic. He goes, wow. goes, Isaiah, you know, my scouts are saying da, da, da. I said, Danny, you know, so I, I met him in Atlanta, Four Seasons Hotel in Atlanta. He and I sat there and, I, and we talked. And I said, Danny, you know, everything I've seen of Jalen Brown, he may not, he may not fit in any other organization. Wow. When he comes to Boston, he is a Celtic, you know, wow. intellectually spiritually, his game, the way it can blossom and develop, the type of person he is, he's a Celtic. And I told Jalen Brown, I said, you know what? You ain't gonna you ain't gonna want to hear this, right? You belong in Boston. You're a Celtic. Wow. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I can't see myself that way. But once he understood the history of the Celtics, the real history of the Celtics, right? He fits hand in glove as a Celtic. Wow. And I said the same thing to Mikhail about Garnett. About Garnett should be with you in that draft. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, dude, thank you very much, man, for your time. It was a pleasure. You know, you go down as one of my all-time favorites anyway. And, and, you know, the day that you and I were sitting down, we were chopping it up and we were talking about, and I said, well, there's only uh, – Talk Draymond Green. I said, there's only been 35 finals MVPs. And I turned around. I said, damn it, I'm one of them. Yeah. And you reached your hand over to me and said, I'm one too. I was like, <laughs> that's my boy right there. That's my boy Blue right there. So, man, appreciate you coming on with me. And uh, my, my podcast is only stronger because of you. Love you and respect, brother, always. All right, man. Take it easy. 
All right. Bye-bye. The Cedric Maxwell Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network.